Hi friends, welcome back to All or None Law. Today I am going to talk briefly about Respiratory Distress Syndrome RDS. Uh, this is a very important topic for your uh, USMLE examination and for other board examinations uh, like uh, Australian Medical Council examination, Canadian Council examination and IFARM and your national uh, board examinations. Uh, before starting this, I would request you to subscribe to our channel that is All or None Law and please tell your friends to subscribe. We need your subscriptions. Okay, let me start with this. Briefly, I am discussing about this important points that will help you for your examination. Respiratory distress syndrome, as you know, uh, let me start with the risk factors, clinical manifestations, monitoring and the treatment. The risk factors are very important because they will ask you the question, they may ask you question on this, which of the following could be the cause for his uh, respiratory distress syndrome or which of the following could be the uh, risk factor for his uh, respiratory distress syndrome or uh, his chest uh, or a lab finding or a chest x-ray finding. Okay, so prematurity, male sex, Caucasian race, maternal diabetes, perinatal asphyxia, c-section without labor, c-section without labor because in normal vaginal delivery there is a compression of the lungs during the passage of the baby so the compression will cause uh, will leads to expulsion of this uh, fluid out from the lungs and hence there will be no uh, respiratory distress syndrome where a c-section will lead to respiratory distress syndrome because the, the, the baby comes out easily right so there is no compression of the baby's chest and everything that's why the fluid uh, the, retains in the lungs and causes respiratory distress syndrome thoracic malformations genetic disorders of uh, surfactant production uh, the clinical manifestations are tachypnea grunting and the retraction remember very important is tachypnea uh, grunting and the retraction okay o2 requirement tends to increase over the first 48 hours if not treated regarding the detail about this i discussed already uh, earlier in my channel you can uh, type respiratory distress syndrome by MRCPCS team you will get in detail okay here is the table just for your USMLE examination laboratory or radiological findings these are very important because they will give the radiological finding definitely chest x-ray diffuse fine granular densities that develop during the first few hours of the life look first few hours of the life that's very important okay uh, monitoring hypotension treat as appropriate uh, a PDA can lead to poor recovery from RDS Closure should be considered if patient is 3 to 4 day old with hemodynamic compromise or continued RDS with poor weaning from the mechanical ventilation. Okay. Treatment. The surfactant therapy is very important. Many centers start CPAP and do not give prophylactic surfactant therapy. Uh, many formulations are available. Check with the institution to determine the appropriate dosage and interval and the number of doses. Consider prophylactic surfactant therapy as soon as clinically feasible for infants less than 27 week gestation who require intubation. This is one of the indications for um, what do you call uh, um, surfactant and uh, even we can we use uh, dexamethasone, right? Steroids. For all other infants, early rescue surfactant within 1-2 to two hours after birth is indicated for worsening respiratory distress on exam or increasing FiO2 requirement above 30 to 40%. Okay? So just go through once. Thank you so much for watching my video.